Bar Rescue's Most Overdue Firings, featuring human resources. Say hi, human resources. Hello. You're blurry, get into the shot. What is your do job title? Your HR supervisor? I'm a director of human resources. Director? Director. Why don't we have director money? As you guys know, I react to a lot of people getting fired on Bar Rescue. I think I've done it twice. And this one is gonna be Overdue Firings, from season three. And in a recent video, I said, why don't bartenders have human resources? That's why they always treat us like shit or get away with shit. It's terrible. It is terrible. For example, in the Abbey, the bar I worked at, there was an open door policy to write a letter. But if you wrote a letter and ever complained, they couldn't fire you, but they could fuck with your schedule. That's retaliation. Retaliation. But who are we gonna go to? HR. We don't have, who's HR at a bar? You can go to your mother. Well, what are you gonna do? Call an attorney. Please. We have attorney money? Where is this money? So since I happen to have my own personal HR, which by the way, because Christina works in HR too. Yes, she does. We have a family legacy in HR and MTV. How did that happen? I have no freaking clue. So when you see me on YouTube or when you see me on television shows as an HR director of HR, what are your thoughts? I am so glad nobody at work watches your show. I disengage myself from what you do. It's what you do. You, I'm proud of it. A lot of people at my job follow you. They follow your podcast. They follow your channel. They follow my podcast. Do you listen to my podcast? I do. do so do you just like pretend to not hear things? I just never talk to you about what I hear. I just watch it. I listen to it and I move on. And you've been on my YouTube channel before. This is actually the room where I filmed the one and only video with dad mm. that got much more attention than yours. And you don't like that. I don't. <laughs> No, I know he's funnier than I am, so it's I'm just not, gonna let it go at that. It's not that he's funnier. It's that this, this poise, this HR, this is you because you're a professional. Yes. Dad sat back with a beer and just read me. But this video is specific to you and your skill set. I usually just yell at it from the perspective of reality TV and from a bartender. But since it has to deal with overdue firings, you can give a different perspective that I figured would be interesting. Okay. So are you ready to watch this? I am ready. Let's go, Anna! Excitement! You need a shot. No! Do you take a shot? Come on, let's take a shot. Oh my God, no! I got special shots! I can't drink while I'm working, no way! We're not working! Here you go. Can I pour my own? Nope, I'm gonna use this. I, do you think she's a drag queen? I think she's a drag queen. She looks like she's in drag, no? Ooh, Tita? Tita, Tita Tequila. Does Diesel need a shot? No. Mom, why do you hate Diesel? I don't hate Diesel. Oh, I do hate Diesel. No, I Diesel, don't come hate here! Diesel. Come here! Everybody asks about Diesel all the time, but he's afraid of YouTube. Look how scared he is. Look, he won't even look at the camera. Aww. He's like, Dad, I hate what you do. Oh, look at this family portrait. A little bit, Michael, just a teeny bit. Okay. Mom. No, that's enough. Mom. No, no, I cannot drink while I work. Oh, that's bullshit. You birthed me. You made this. When I was drunk. <laughs> okay. I want to see customers waiting a long time for drinks. I also want to see if Lana can delegate. And then I want to see Bill walk the walk rather than just do the talk. I want to see him manage. And I want to see Ali function with some confidence. Come on in! Are you used to people telling their workers beneath them? What, are the, what is that called? Underlings? They're, they're, that's a terrible word. Underlings. No. Yes. They're direct reports. Sure. Are you used to seeing people in a higher position of power expecting something of those people that they can't do? Like how a bar owner would yell at you and be mad at you for not doing your job when you actually are doing your job and they're just doing cocaine in the back room all night? Well, that's terrible, number one. It's facts. And number two, uh, yes, a manager can expect something of you and tell you what to do. And a manager shouldn't have to do or know how to do everything. That's what they hire you for. But what, okay. They should just manage you. Okay, all right, okay. 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 I disagree. I, I think if you tell me to do something, you should be able to do it. But that's not really the way the world works. But how are you gonna know if I'm doing something correctly if you yourself can't do it? By the results and the impact. So if they're good, leaders because you could be great at what you do but you could be a terrible leader or you could be a great leader but not necessarily know how to do all the pieces so you know what you build a great team you put the right people in place you tell them what you expect and then you see what happens what am i <laughs> i think you are great at what you do you know what you want i don't think that you would listen to managers very well, because really? you're your own person. What makes you say that? What kind of drink is this? That's margarita. You guys have built pill glass, or is it a shaking drink? It's a uh, shaking drink. Redo it, redo it, man. Okay, in here, right? Right in, man. 
Coach is a great guy. He's got a great personality, but he's slow as molasses. Of course he's slow as molasses. Look at him. What is he like pushing? How old are you? He looks the same. I'm not talking about anybody's age. That's ageism. <laughs> And you hire people for their skills and not for how old they are. Okay, so. but his skills are matching up with his age. Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. He's looking like, like a fucking snail. He's working at what he knows how to work and how he knows how to work. He should be. Yeah, but it, this is a stress test. If you're a bartender, you have to be fast in a fast-paced environment. Okay. So if you're not able to do that, it doesn't matter your age. Exactly. Then you have to focus and give feedback on his ability to be quick, energetic. And he's not, up with the because pace. he's old. You never use age. What you say is, here's what I expect. Here's how you're doing. Here's what you're not doing. You old. need to step it up or you're going to be stepping it out. I think if you're... I think lawsuit. Okay. So stop. Let's move on. No, because if you're an older bartender, that's fine. But sometimes, like you said, your body can't do fast paced things in stressful environments. Uh, so you need to be working in I a different environment that. bar. So when you tell me, Michael, what do you want to be? 40 years old on YouTube? Were you buying? Was but that I'm, ageism? But Was that ageism? <laughs> or are you just a concerned mother? I'm <laughs> Bill's down here dumped five margaritas and he dumped three complaints of flat beers down here. You know what's also going on so you know Bill as a manager? Coach only pulls beers. So he asks who wants beers, he keeps going to pull beers so he doesn't have to make drinks. That's is that what he's doing? He's only pouring beer so he doesn't have to make difficult drinks. Okay, so this guy is having a hard time keeping up with the pace of the bar. Uh-huh and working within the expectations. But he's so, a nice guy and everyone loves him. So he's falling into his comfort zone and he's trying to fly under the radar. A lot of people do that, but it's up to you as a manager to really respectfully give that coaching and feedback. And if they still are not right for the job, what do you do? You gotta fire them. That's what I'm saying, Anna. Laying on the line, because you fire people, right? I do. That's right, you know what she says? Pack your shit and get Never. out. Did Lindsay Never. Lohan fire me for a good reason? Absolutely. 100%. If she would have called me, I would have fired you for it. It felt good to get promoted tonight to bartender, and I'm still doing half the, di half the dishes while I'm doing it as well. So. Are you that makes me so happy. A bar back getting the opportunity to step in to be the bartender because you know that's the cast system. I mean, a lot of people don't do it my way, but the way I started, you start as a doorman checking IDs. Okay. Then you learn about the bar to learn to then become the bar back to learn about where the glasses are, where the alcohol is, learn about the bar. And then after bar back, then you become bartender. Mm -hmm. So this is like a big moment of like get, moving up. It's like, it's like getting, what is it it's called? In, what is it called? A it's raise? Like, uh, and it's they, not giving what, a raise. No, it's getting it? like a promoted. promotion. But you know what? They're giving him a chance to shine. And that's fantastic. Cause sometimes you have a talent on your team. And unless you give them an, um, uh, an ability to stretch themselves, you don't know what they're good or not good at. But, exactly. Always give them the ability to stretch themselves. But, okay, really, <laughs> you have to do it respectfully to coach. Yes. Because you don't demean him in front of his other workers. That no, you do in the bar. You do in the bar. Well, what do you mean? That's what we do in this family. I'm sorry. How do we learn lessons? If I was in that bar, I'd be like, excuse me, but this is going to stop. And oh, yeah, because that's going to go so well. I would write <laughs> so all well. of them up for disrespect. I should really understand this industry, but I still don't think that's right. No, 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 no. This is why I think you're fun, because you are a director of HR that most people deal with. Because I always, I talk enough about the bartender experience and the reality TV side of it. This is for everybody who isn't in my world that works a more corporate professional lifestyle. It's terrible. To have an insight because even like how I'm talking to you, someone who is like knows about this stuff, you still don't even know. But you, you know what? You could still sue that bar. Oh my God. Yeah, but if you sue your bar, you have to have enough money to sue the bar and the bar's got money to fight you back. Yeah. So all you're going to do is waste, mom, it's I'm a dead telling end. telling you, but I'm No, but I know, but I'm explaining like, people terrible. don't understand. There's a dead end. You have to be okay with how they treat you. You will just get fired. If you ever complain, they'll show you the stack of resumes to show you how replaceable you are so you never feel valued. And then you leave. And then on this YouTube channel, who's HR? Me. That is terrible. So you gotta find the right bar. Not all bars are like that. It can't be. It can't be. Okay. Well, if you work at a bar and you have human resources, let me know. I feel great. I'm really happy. I think everybody's having a good time. Here's too warm. Everybody's doing a really great job. We're going to wait for these drinks right now. 
So do you see the perspective of the manager from the perspective of a clientele? Yeah, but who is that woman? She is like... Is she a manager? She works there somehow. I don't know her direct title because they haven't said it. Well, she's not very self-aware. Okay. She's got a bunch of unhappy customers and she's walking around like with rosy sunglasses going, everybody is so happy and having a good time. <laughs> She should be fired. <laughs> what the hell is happening? I see Lana's main problem. She is oblivious to what's going on around her. She's focused on... Do you feel proud? I feel proud. Are you happy? I... No, because I love when I say something and then we watch it and they say exactly what we just said. Yeah. That gets me off <laughs> so much. He said oblivious. That's not nice. I say she's not self-aware. But let's move on. What if I... Do you know how bad that is? Wait, I, mean, I have to ask. Go ahead. Did he just break a glass in the ice? Yes. So they have to throw it all out? All out. You have, it's, that's called burning the ice because you can't just think you pick it out because no. God forbid there's a shard of glass that goes no. in someone's drinking cocktail. That's a lawsuit so, for real. Absolutely. And so, someone's going to get hurt. Yes. Yeah, so when that happens, and it's imagine packed house, you now have to stop what you're doing, get, get water. Sometimes the water's under the building in buckets, refill the ice. All stuff that the bar back should be doing, but sometimes they're doing other things now. So all you're doing is probably wasting 30 minutes of money you could be making. So did he do that because he was careless? He, 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 it slipped out of his hand, which as a bartender happens. That's why a lot you have to be careful because you're, you're moving so fast and the, and the glasses are wet. Okay. It's understandable, but when it happens... Did you ever do that? Okay, let's move on. <sighs> you don't want to know how I handled it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I, I, they see the tables that have glasses, the tables that don't. The ticket times that are good, the ticket times that are bad. You don't see any of this stuff. You don't even see the glass in your own damn ice bin. And I, but now, if you could talk to people like that at your job, how happy would you be? No. This is terrible. First of all, I can under... Look, he has to give him harsh feedback. I get it. And, it sh and sometimes feedback is difficult. But to do it in a group like that, like compliment one person and then demean oh, yeah. another... This woman, she's terrified. She knows she's next. <laughs> I mean, you just don't do that. No, but that's how it's done in other places. You get publicly shamed. You, yeah. No, uh, you know what that is? There's no psychological safety. Do you remember? You have to be psychologically safe at work. Do you remember when I called you, I was working at a bar I already mentioned, and I'm not gonna keep mentioning them, and they had a customer who was hiding behind a pillar to like, which an area I could not see. He was there for like a half hour and I didn't see him. And he complained to management and they brought me in the back room with three other bartenders in the room and made me sit there and watch the camera for the full half hour to see how I, they said, ignored him. And I said, I just did not see him. He didn't wave, he didn't say hello. And I said, okay, I get it. And they're like, no, no sit here in front of the rest of the staff and watch me miss a customer for a half hour. And I said, I got, I was sitting there being like, I get it. I'm sorry. They're like, no, sit here. I was being punished like that. Terrible. That's terrible. I know. So did you like working there? No. Was it a good culture? No. Would you recommend somebody to work there? No, I don't. I, I talk shit about them all the time. Well, good. Because good you know what the bad thing is? Sometimes you got to be careful because some of your people can cause bad marketing for you in the future. I'm glad you left. That's terrible. And and I don't like this bar either, but let's move. You're fired. You can leave now. Do you agree with him? Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Do you agree with him being fired? Yes. Do you agree with how it was done? No. Okay. <laughs> if the bar had music and lighting, it would definitely be better. Just girls like dancing, guys like girls dancing. So. Yeah. You don't even see, you don't hear, you don't notice what's going on in your business. This is a nightmare. There's no dance floor lighting, there's no sound system, and there's no damn reason for- Now I'm gonna defend the bartenders because the bartenders are busy bartending. Normally at a smaller bar, the bartenders can do other responsibilities like bring the drinks to the tables, manage the floor, do those things. But in a busy packed bar in that moment, you do not have time to be worrying about the music. You'd be worrying about the floor operation. There needs to be somebody whose job uh, there is to do that. Totally agree, and where, where the heck's his manager? Diesel's crying. Okay, Dad. My son is crying. So I totally agree because nice. they're busy doing their jobs. Thank you. And if it's not in your job description, it should be your job. So let me clarify that. Okay. You're hired to do a role. Not everything can be in your job description, mm -hmm. but that is a specific responsibility. And if someone's in charge of that, they should know they're in charge. What if you're getting paid $2 an hour and you're only making money based on when you're bartending and everything else you're not getting paid for? When does act your wage come into play? Well, I think that if someone has responsibilities outside of the bartender and tip, 
they should be compensated for it. Thank and, you. And this is, is this California? I don't know. Because you Yahoo's in California get paid really well. Shh, don't tell me what that you're not even exposing me. I don't know. Look at me. I'm <laughs> We got food ready, but no one's taking it. How much food we got? Nobody's getting any food? We got two tickets. Michelle, somebody has to get food out of the kitchen. We need that. We have food, I can't get out of the kitchen. Where's the lease? This is why there needs to be somebody whose job it is to serve the food, move the food. Bartenders are notoriously expected to do a lot of things that are not in their job description, which is why so I said wait, that, because they're not getting compensated for it. They're managing the bar, but they're supposed to be waiters and waitresses too? Yes, when you're a bartender, it, sometimes there's servers. The servers, when you order it, they come to the bar, get the drinks, and move. But the bartenders sometimes, at some places, aren't just responsible for the people coming to the bar. They're responsible for going to the tables, getting the drinks, That's making the that. drinks, bringing it to the tables, bringing the food to the tables, when they're trying to manage a whole bar and they have to be fast and get everybody taken care of. That's a lot. Yes. That's a lot. That's why people do drugs. That's... Yeah. I'm cracked. I'm cracked. I'm done. What's going on? I can't keep track of my tables. Is crying going to make this better? No. Okay, so if you're going to cry, I'm going to ask you to leave. I need you to act like a manager. Do it. I'm failing. I feel like I can't, but I'm not going to catch up. So she's a manager crying during the job. I've seen managers cry. I've seen people cry. I've seen people tell me they can't sleep at night. I, I've heard it all. There is something happening and I feel sorry for her. Oh, but if, she, if she's not good for this job, she needs to leave because this job isn't good for her. Well, mom, no matter if that's how you handle stress, no matter if there's something going on in your personal life, does that in the end of the day matter when it's reflecting on your job in this way? It only matters if they're not providing her the tools that she needs to do her job right. So if there's not enough resources, if there's not a good system, if they're setting her up for failure, it's their fault. If it's just her skill set, then it's her fault. You're a disorganized mess. You can't read anybody. Michelle, now it's time for you to be an owner. You're going to fire her. She can't stay as a server? I've done this 30 years. If you don't demote employees and keep them around, it doesn't work. Do you demote employees and keep them around? We demote employees, but we do it with their mutual consent because someone has to be okay to change their roles. So if someone is a manager and they're not a good manager, but they're a great employee, we have that conversation. And I would if never. They, if they, but if I someone, could never. My, my pride and ego. But would if someone's never. like you and would not be able to do it, then we allow them an out okay. for the severance and things like that. I get it. I get it. Do it. Are you sorry? This place. I proved Elise wrong. I did my job and I did a good job. Have you ever fired somebody and they walked out in a huff like that? Like, F you cursing people out? Yes. How does that go? It's not pretty. Because I would think now if you need a reference for a new job, if you leave amicably, even if you're getting fired, you could still possibly call them for maybe a reference on good things you did. I don't know. You but... shouldn't burn bridges. It's not the right way to set yourself up for future. Mm. But um, some people just, if, I'm going to tell you, if you're not self-aware or if you're being protected, these two were friends. You know, yeah. These two were friends. So she felt her friend will never fire her. That's the biggest mistake someone will make. So, I'd fire my friend. I'd fire you. I know you would. i fire you when dinner's bad. Yeah. And your name is? Jana. Hi, Jana. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. How long have you been here? I've been here eight months. What's in a margarita? Can you make sure I'm a margarita on the rocks? <laughs> tequila and, and triple sec. How much tequila? They're a bartender. They've been working there for eight months. They don't yeah. know how to make a margarita. Well, she should just be like shooting that out like it was <laughs> her nighttime bedtime prayer. Do you work with people in corporate who pretend to know how to do things that their job role requires and try to skate around it? They can. They do. do. They? Speak with speak with oomph, Anna. They, Put your balls in your chest. They can and they do, but then they're they they're always it, it always comes out. It always comes out. We always come out. We always end up coming out. An ounce. Two ounces. An ounce. Pick one. I was triple sec. An ounce. Half an ounce. I say that because it was interesting because you didn't know how to make it. And it's the most popular drink in America. It is. I've never bartended before, so I don't know how to make drinks very well. I, I need this job. I could understand never bartending before. I can. But my question here, yes, I'm going to shame that bartender for not knowing how to make a margarita. You know who else I'm going to shame? The person who hired her the person who did not train her. When I first tried to bartend at Portobello's in Oakland, 
They asked me how to make a Long Island. I didn't know how to make a Long Island. I've never bartended before. The only experience I had was making drinks at a tailgate in college. When I worked at the bar in New York, I was somewhat trained for three days. And by day three, I knew how to make every drink under the sun. So companies who are most successful hire for potential and train them. And everybody out there can be trained to do anything within your skill set. So yes. if you have the potential, you can do it. I could be a bartender. Maybe I'd be like the first guy, but I could be a bartender. I can make simple drinks. Like You're too nice. Go. No, can I be honest with you? You would suck. You are too nice. You have to be able to tell people to go F themselves. Which you can do, but you won't do it publicly. So shame on the owner because she's been there eight months and she doesn't know how to do one. What's wrong with this place, Kim? More than anything, it's probably theft. It's the stealing, it's the overpouring. So let me share with you service. You know that that's why- Done. Okay. Theft, done. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk them out. You know that's why they, that's the, what, what they say they fired me for at the Abbey. I know, and I know it wasn't true. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll give them a drink and then not bring it up and take the full price, price of the drink and just put it in your pocket. I've seen bars do that. Yep. I've seen that little box under the, the cash register. I've never stolen, but I have kept the tip for myself. For example, at my bar sometimes we'll pull tips and I complain all the time about bartenders who don't pull their weight and expect that we're all gonna go home with the same amount of money. If I get a hundred dollar tip from someone, that, Mama, that's going to me. That's my fucking hundred dollars. Get out of here. By the way, you proved it to the Abbey, so whatever. I know. Getting fired from them was the best thing that ever happened to me. That's it when was. I started doing this YouTube video. It was. It was <laughs> the best thing. Are you hearing, Abby? It was the best thing. <laughs> thank you. Say thank but you. But theft is not good. What we do is we come in here and we weigh every liquor bottle. And the next day we go through the cash register. If the cash register says 20 ounces were sold, but 40 ounces are missing, what does that tell me, Justin? Theft. That gets people all the time. You, so, but you have to know sometimes, like if you're a smart bartender that's good at stealing, because I say all the time, a good crime, I'll never judge you for it. We're Sicilian. But wait a minute, theft is theft of a free drink, not. Th I'm thinking theft of money. No, because sometimes, like I said, you you sell the drink, you don't bring it up, you just uh, take the full price of the drink. Got it. So there's a system you can put it on the pour spouts that measures the amount of alcohol being sold. That's the way I know, unless this is a different operation. Yeah. But you can see that if you're a, a if you're a, if you're a smart criminal. But what about if you're somebody like Dad who expects every third drink should be free? We don't have the control to do that. However, there is a bar by. If, if you're a customer, you should never expect anything because oh, he does. That's what. I, well, that's Greg Moldering. At some bars I work at, we'll get something called a bar buy with a limit of $40. So I have $40 worth of product to give out for free. Okay. So, so say you just tip me really good, I want to buy your next drink. I'll put it on my bar buy. But I have to ring it up on my bar buy. Okay. So, so that if this... account for it. Yes. Yeah, so if this happens, you have it accounted for and you can prove it that it's not that. When I look at Monday, Melody and work, on that day, we did uh, $576 in sales, and we gave away $160. That's 25% of our sales. I'm also gonna point out real quick, real quick, that it might not be theft. They could just be doing an overpour. Yeah. Like say a cocktail should be two ounces and they're just putting too much in. It could be an overpour. Which, that's favorite bartender. That, 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 <laughs> that's my favorite bartender as well. Be a manager, not a mother. This is your moment of truth. As a manager, I should... I gotta let you go. May be excused. Really? You think I'm, I'm just sitting there going, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour eight ounces into a six ounce cup. No, no, no. I, I need to get out of here. I have Okay, so it was overpouring. And let me tell you, there's a lot of uh, managers there, by the way, who protect their people until all of a sudden something's uncovered and now you're like- Throw it the bus. And that's when HR is like, are you effing kidding? Well, we don't say that, but <laughs> we think that. Like, how long has this been going on? Cause then what, what happens is they're not doing the company or the employee any favors. Cause now this person, this is how she's done it. You've never said anything to her. Now you want to fire her. Mm -hmm. That's how she's done her job for years. Nobody's ever trained her, taught her. So she's mad now because she's like, what the heck? You know, yeah. because nobody... it wasn't done intentionally and it was accepted. And you put you set the tone on, on what is yeah. acceptable and what is not. I say that all the time. Right. And what can you get for your knee? Okay, margarita, no salt, and I'm going to check on your wings right now, okay? Hey, guys, um, I need a margarita. 
Margarita with no salt. For table 15. I don't know whose table that is, but I'm checking on their food right now. That's an horrible, horrible system. Horrible system. There needs to be a ticketing system, whether it's rung in or written down. It needs to be written down with the cost of everything, which ticket number it is so you know which is coming in first, so you know that you can get that out and pri prioritize that first. And there needs to be the table number written on that check. You're overloading yourself. And there's nothing worse than getting a margarita with salt when you didn't want salt. <laughs> you cook like a rookie. I don't think that's idea, man. You don't even know how to cook a hamburger, man. I can cook a hamburger. You're squeezing it into the grill and squeezing all the juice out of it. Did you cook a hamburger that way? No. So this is what I don't understand about this show. It's when you tell somebody what they can't do, and then they try to insist that they can. Where not only did, you know, you have higher-ups telling you you can't, it's on camera. Yeah, but he's not self-aware. So, but like, what I'm telling you is that if you have a higher-up that's telling you you're not good at your job, and you know you're filming a show, and they've been yelling at you all night. Like, not self-aware? Is it not self-aware? Is it delusional? Well, I think he's not self-aware, and it happens all the time. It does? Like, and have you, you ever know. told somebody they're not good at something, and they tell you, I disagree? Yeah. The the minute we have those cops, first of all, it's not me. The manager does it. We support them. But I could tell in that first meeting if this is going to be salvageable. Like, if we can give them enough feedback where they can make improvements and, and you know move on and do yes. better or if they're gonna get fired. A big thing on being successful is being able to take criticism and learning and growing. I say take feedback. Now I will say this, I've had enough, enough success in, in my Atlanta career that if you tell me my margarita's bad, you're lying. Like that's just not true. That's like if you tell me I'm ugly, not true. <laughs> that you, is absolutely not true. If you tell me I'm not funny, oh that's not true. <laughs> if you say I'm loud, obnoxious, and annoying, that's true. Eh, 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 I'm gonna work on that. But I think that there's a difference there. I also think that there have been things that people have told me that I'm not good at, and I need to be able to hear it, learn it, and improve, or lie. Like if a boss told me that I was making my margaritas wrong, I'd be like, that ain't true. But I wouldn't say it. Customers like to bitch though in the service industry. Customers have come up to me and said that there's no alcohol in this cocktail. And I'm like, no, I just made it well. You just, that's why you don't know. People have ordered a drink and said that they hated it. And I said, oh, okay, no problem. I'll remake it. I take the cocktail. I walk around the bar. I give them the same cocktail. And they go, ah, oh, so much better. What are you gonna do? Kevin. You're fired. You dude, good night. Out of here. You don't know half the. You've been here for two days and in the back and all the other. I had you pegged in three minutes. A fraud. Yeah, me pegged, see. yeah. smile on. See, see, he's fired because he wasn't taking criticism. Claims that you don't know anything because you've only been here for a few days when you could say you could tell within one minute, one meeting. I could, you could tell in a meet. Yeah, absolutely. This guy and his attitude, and mm -hmm. absolutely, he needs to go. And who's that one? The one closer to us. One down to Brittany. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you. I can. She can. Oh, spend a lot of time texting on her phone. Whose fault is that? Uh, Jerry's. So who's that? I see. Uh, hold on. She's sitting there texting on her phone. There's one person at that bar. What else are they supposed to do? Like maybe clean up some side work fine or whatever, but like they're sitting at a bar all day doing nothing. Yeah, but you know what? If you have that rule and you don't want them on their phone unless they're on their breaks, that's a rule. It I, is. I it never is. followed that rule. Well, I was okay. on my phone. Then you may have gotten fired for it. <laughs> this gets me. That's a fake TurboTax system. The problem is... That's rubber tube. It's not surgical stainless steel like a turbo top would be. Stop. I'm going to tell you right now that is a health hazard. That's going to harbor bacteria because I guarantee you they're not cleaning that, proper, cleaning that properly. And also that means to me that they're doing that because they don't know how to pour a beer, which I've literally done a whole video on how to pour a beer. They don't know how to pour a beer. The bartenders aren't trained. trained. I'm, I'm stuttering. I'm stuttering. Why did you make me this way? <clears throat> So I guess you're not happy with the plastic. No, because it's gross. I know they're not cleaning it and they're doing it. It's, it's a cheat. It's cheating. They're cheating because they don't know how to pour a fucking beer and that takes two fucking seconds to learn. Get I'm very passionate about this. And what that is, is that's a haven for bacteria. A Just like you said. So tu sei un pazzo. You're so smart. I'm really not. Okay. <laughs> it's all about him. I got balls. <laughs> Are your balls that big? Hell no, they're bigger. <laughs> ah!
He is a legal discrimination harassment case just waiting with like his balls on a platter. Because I mean, you, you've you literally, I've heard, I heard, I heard the cops, that you've had to fire people for making inappropriate comments at yeah. work events, not just work. Absolutely. Was, so, I mean, the fact that he's doing this with customers, I always say it's funny till it's not. Everybody could be laughing and then you could do that one thing. That was great. When you guys sit here and tell me that, you know, he this and he that, but you both together have the authority to stop that tomorrow. You can take control of the bank accounts tomorrow, but that's what 60% of a business is. To point. So the fact of the matter is, you're not in a submissive position to him. Sure. So he needs to see your anger, you pissed. You know what the problem is, though? They all opened a bar together, they're probably our friends. I would say they're probably friends and they probably don't have the cash flow to buy them out. Yep. But they could keep him in as an investor and tell him he can't be on site. That's it. Work! You're making a fool of yourself. And you're disrespectful to your partners whose houses are on the line. And they're doing this in front of the whole bar. I was just gonna say, that has to be for TV. That's No, that's public shaming. Uh, that, 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 no. That's what happens. No, I hate that. I'm sorry. That's the only thing I don't like, but this guy's gotta go. They own 60% of the business. You give them their keys tonight, you walk out of here, come back tomorrow as a reasonable partner. Yeah, because some of these people take out second mortgages on their home. And he cannot be the face of the brand of their bar. He cannot be. Well, because sometimes when I say this, I say this at a, in a lot of like the drunkest owners reacting to those of Bar Rescue. Sometimes if being in your bar impinges it to that point, then you are the biggest liability. You need to remove yourself. But yep. sometimes that's hard to do when you're the owner. I also point out a lot that sometimes these people that are too drunk have drinking problems that I take very seriously. Well, they can address that tomorrow. <laughs> they, they need to get him... No, really. They need to get him away. They need to get the keys. And then they need address to... Address it when he's sober. Address it when he's sober. Mm -hmm. And a good company, and we do this a lot, if we feel someone is struggling, not performing, we always refer them to our employee assistant. Personal issue, drinking, whatever it is. But it doesn't mean that we allow them to continue to be a trainer. Nurse to be associated with it right now. And uh, now see me, I know they're embarrassed, but I would love it. I would be so entertained. I'd be like, oh, this place has drama. I would be mortified. I'd buy oh, a drink and shut the place down. Mom, I you, hope I did good. You did an HR. I did an HR. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see my mom back. Do you have to go to work? Yes. Go ahead, go. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, that was so much fun. I got to have my mom here. And that was like interesting input, I think. I like to not only have guests from reality TV and bartenders, there's other perspectives that I like to bring into play when I do these videos because I'm trying to spread information here. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. I put them out weekly every Tuesday and Thursday, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. But not my mom. She had me. I was in an accident. I was a surprise. Special thank you to everybody over on Patreon and for everybody who switched over to memberships here on this channel because remember, I'm only doing memberships where I go live for my regulars and barflies. You get perks like having your name at the end of my video here. And it helps me respond to you guys faster and have your comments highlighted if you have any video ideas to suggest or things you want to see me react to. It helps me more than you know, and I just, I appreciate it. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Mike of GTV, and you are fucking welcome. Goodbye. I brought the